Hello and welcome to Exotic Gardening UK, your watch Chris Weekly. And in this episode, we're looking at jobs to do in the exotic garden in April. Now April is one of the busiest months in the exotic garden with so much going on and the big unknown is the weather and the weather determines what you can and can't do in early and late April so there's lots of jobs to do some you can do early on some you have to wait until it gets a bit warmer so depending where you live this can be very different in terms of what plants can come out what, what things can be uncovered so we'll go through them in this episode and it's one of the busiest months because you've got seeds germinating, you've got plants that need potting on, you've got things that need uncovering, plants need hardening off, lots of things need uncovering and it's all go in the garden. So one of the jobs that I need to do and what most people need to do is look after their tree ferns. So the tree ferns in April, will some of them will be starting to actually push out new leaves and we've got to look at that and think well are we still going to get frosts because you've got to protect them as long as you possibly can and unfortunately if you get early shooting of leaves in early april you can still get frost which will blacken off the new fronds because they are very tender when they're emerging it takes a few weeks for them to harden off and not get affected by light frosts and this is the same for other plants in the garden as well so things like the persicaria the gunnera the tetrapanax, tetrapanax rex, all their newly emerging leaves will, will happen in April and any slight frost will blacken them very easily. But lots of plants like that you can't really do much about, you've just got to let them unfortunately get crispy and blacken and then new leaves will follow. But with the tree ferns we can still protect them with fleece and straw in the centre and try to hopefully hold back the growth a little bit but obviously if nature takes its turn, we have warm weather and then we get the cold weather then you will get some fronds that will die off but it's not the end of the world, more fronds, more leaves will follow later on in the season in May and onwards. So looking at tree ferns specifically, what we need to do is keep that straw and fleece in the crowns as long as possible. So I'd keep that right through April if at all possible obviously if all the leaves do shoot then you can't keep it protected like that and unfortunately if you get a late frost then they'll blacken off and the other thing we've got to look at with tree ferns is keeping the trunks wet because it can be very dry in spring and because it might not be really warm you, you might not notice it but plants dry out so quickly so particularly with tree ferns you've got to keep the trunks and the crowns really really moist especially when they're trying to produce the new leaves. So keep them watered, even if it's a cold day, look outside, go out, feel if it's drying the crown. If it is, give it a good soaking. The, the actual trunk doesn't want to be that greyish sort of light colour, it wants to be like a deep chocolate brown colour all the time. So make sure you water, 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 or grow it in a nice, shady, humid, moist part of the garden and then it won't need us watering much in those areas. So with tree ferns, keep them well watered, keep them protected as long as possible, but unfortunately, if we do get late frosts, then they'll blacken some leaves. And same for tetrapanax, mentioned they can get frosted as well. If they do, it's not a big deal. The leaves come out so quickly that a few blackened leaves, they'll just fall off in a few weeks time new leaves will follow. There's no point trying to protect them too much. Maybe a bit of fleece wrapped around the center just before the first leaves come out. But apart from that, it's got to let nature take its course. It's a funny time of year, April and May, with the last frost because you can still get quite sharp frost down to minus three, minus four, but it should only last a few hours as we get through April because they've got the heat of the sun in the day. The strength of the sun's much warmer, much stronger now than in winter. So any frost won't do any deep penetrating damage to sort of palms or any other plants but you can still get dead crispy leaves. And that goes for things like the gunnera as well. The gunnera leaves are emerging now. Try to protect them as long as possible but again you will lose some leaves if we get a late frost. So ideally the 
perfect scenario really is to have a cool sort of May, sorry, March, cool March, and then a nice warm April, May with no frost and get a nice long season with no dieback. But obviously nature is, does what it wants to do basically. So that is tree ferns and sort of tender leaves of plants. And that goes for things that you might think are hardier as well. So some hedging plants, my shephalas, even things like ivy, they can blacken off if you get new growth followed by frost. So you just gotta live with it basically. Don't worry too much about that. And the other big job we've got to do in April is uncover all the plants that have been covered in mulch and straw and things like that. So here we've got the collocasias, we've got the dahlias, the gingers that have been covered in straw on all the beds. And I'll take all that straw off and let air get light to the plants and it'll start warming up the soil and they'll start growing through April and into May. The timing of that is difficult. Again, you look at the weather forecast, you look if you're gonna get frost or cold weather, and if you do, then you probably hold off from doing that as long as possible. It will happen in April, at some point in April, where all that's uncovered. But if you know you've got a cold period coming up, it doesn't make sense to take all that mulch off. So wait as long as possible. Aeoniums. I like to get my aeoniums out of the greenhouse and into the garden in April. Now that is early, but the reason I want to do that is, personally, I have so many aeoniums taking up a lot of space in the greenhouse, and I need that space for all my seeds that have germinated, and I need to pot them on and give them more light in the greenhouse and more space. So it's about space management, really. Aeoniums can do deal with a bit of frost, even if they're sort of shrivel and die back a little bit, they'll bounce back in May and June. So looking at the weather again, it's a, it's a bit of a gambling act whether or not you put them out early or later. But for me, I try to get them out in April, so I have that space. And I don't just stick them out in sun, I don't just plant them straight out. What I'll do is I'll take them out and I'll cover them in fleece, put them by the house wall or under shelter, under cover in a cold frame, something like that, so that it keeps the harshest weather off them and it sort of starts the process of hardening them off. So I will take my aeoniums out in April. I've done it right at the start of April before, but sometimes you've got to wait till much later on, depending on the weather. Now April might be the month that any pans have suffered damage over winter will be showing how much damage they've really received. It can take quite a few weeks and a few months sometimes before the plants look like they're the dying or unhealthy. But in the case of this one here, this is a Briar dulcis, which is not a hardy palm. It's just a, a plant to see if it'll get through these winters. But obviously the last winter was bad here for me. And you can see the outer leaves are looking pretty bad. But the thing to check on a lot of palms, even if they've got really healthy green leaves, is just pull the centre slightly. Don't mean tug it really hard, just pull it slightly and if it comes away like let's see if this one does that's the centre leaf look and look that has come away this is called spear pull and it can happen on all sorts of plants it's happened on my trachycarpus as well which are very hardy but sometimes if you get a frost and cold for a long time right in the centre that's when it can rot away at the centre and take a few weeks or months to show for that rot to really break away the base of the leaf and then it's spear pulls and what you're left with is a great big hole in the middle of your palm and this can be treated basically by either covering it over or in palms like this which aren't very very vigorous and very hardy you can put some hydrogen peroxide pour it in the center about three to five percent you can buy it from places like boots the chemist or amazon it's just used for like a mouth gargle on things like that so it basically oxidizes any rot and bacteria and everything in there killing all the germs basically and allowing hopefully if there's a, a growth point still alive to push out new leaves over the next couple of weeks and months so all is not lost if you see a center like this if it's a tender palm like this it's more likely not to come back but a more hardy palm with spear pull like a bootier or a trachyarpus will come back pretty well so all is not lost if you see that. Hydrogen peroxide, cover it over and you'll get new growth in this summer. 
So now we're in April, we can sow the last of our seeds, and the seeds we're going to sow are those that grow fast and vigorous. So we've got things like zinnias, ricinus, and also I'm sowing some gourd seeds as well to trail over the pergola. So I've got some cells here because the big, the big seeds, and they need their own space. And I'm going to put my ricinus seeds in here. So this one is ricinus impala, and we should have about a dozen or so seeds in this packet. Do you got to remember with ricinus seeds, they are very poisonous, so do wash your hands after touching them. So you can see nice big seeds there. And it's simple as getting some good multi-purpose compost like we have here and getting one seed per cell and just putting it a couple of centimetres under the surface of the compost. And then I'm going to give these a real, real good soak so that it soaks the seeds for a good 24 hours and it'll dry out a little bit and then to keep the compost moist. And these will be up within a few days. It's nice and warm in the greenhouse now, so it's a good 25 degrees. And it's got the heater on at night as well, so it stays above sort of 10 degrees. But these will actually go on the heated mat or the propagator, because they want to be nice and warm. Stay about 25 degrees, something like that. And these will germinate in no time. So you don't want to do this too early. If you do this in February, or early March, you can get big plants by May, because you can't plant these out until May, because they are tender. So you, April's the best time to do these. And that's the same for the zinnias as well. And look at that perfect no seeds left. So that is the ricinus. Got all the ricinus to sow as well. I'll do it in exactly the same way. The zinnias, again, they'll have their own individual cells. And the same with the gods, but the gods I'll probably put two seeds per cell and then pick out the weakest one when they've germinated. So time to put these in the heated propagator and give them a really good water. So that's all the seeds sown for this year. April is the last month that I sow any seeds really in the heated propagator and the zinnias and the riciness. And we've got various other pots around here of other seedlings as well that I sowed a little bit earlier. And most of those have yet to come up, but they will do shortly, I'm sure. And not everything goes to plan. So some of these seed trays, you can see lots of nice seedlings in. And they're doing well, but unfortunately the slugs have got to things, so... This tray here was full of French marigold seedlings and have all been eaten apart from one. But not to worry, I'll just reuse the compost, put some spare zinnia seeds in here so hopefully they'll come up in a few weeks. And unfortunately all my lovely tetrapanax seedlings, the slugs have decimated them all. There are over 50 seedlings that came up and now we just have the one sole survivor just there that the slugs haven't quite managed to find yet. So that's it when you're battling with nature. You often get a few disappointments. We've still got lots of seedlings that will make a nice just summer display in the garden this year. And then these Aeoniums, like I said earlier, these we brought out in a few days when the cold periods pass, which were due in this April. And they'll give me all this nice sunny bench to put all my seedlings when I pop them up into individual pots in a few days time. So there's plenty of space for all these to go in their own little pots on the workbench here. And one final job that I'll be doing in April is removing the rain snow shelters from my arid bed. The worst of the weather's passed, now we've got to April. Frosts are not a problem for these agaves under here. But obviously the cold, the ice and the wet is. So these polycarbonate structures are easy to remove. And these will be taken off 
in April so that they can get nice light and heat to the plants below. Thank you for watching this edition of Exotic Garden UK Yorkshire Weekly. Join me next week where I'll be doing more in the garden.